Hi guys, welcome back to Let's Talk Chemistry and our products with uh, your host, moi, Sarah McCarthy. So the last time uh, I made a video on ingredients, we talked SLSs, and what I'm going to talk about today is an ingredient called tetrasodium EDTA. It's found in a lot of beauty products, including our own mm, uh, uh, chunks and a couple of the other ingredients. Now, normally what we use it as, we use it as a stabilizer. It will help prevent um, metals getting into hair, help prevent metals from binding to our skin. And it's great because it actually helps um, the products penetrate a little bit different. Um, some people will get a little extra special when they talk about ingredients and it's not anything towards them. And if you're one of these, I'm truly sorry, don't mean to offend, but it's because Y'all don't know the chemistry behind it. Now, I'm not by any means, I wanna put that disclaimer out there, a chemistry expert, but I've taught several high-level chemistry classes. I absolutely adore the subject, and it fascinates me to no end. So, let's talk tetrasodium EDTA. So, tetrasodium EDTA, okay, uh, the prefix tetra means four, and sodium means it has four sodiums on it. Um, EDTA, I actually have to look up as ethylene di blah blah blah. The longest name is not um, thing. Let me look up ethylene di dimetra tetraacetic acid. Okay, EDTA is exactly um, what it is. It's it's a very long and wordy word McWord there. I had to look that up. Um, but a lot of people get a little um, they get a little grumpy because one of the starting ingredients, if you do your research, is uh, formaldehyde. And um, somebody else had mentioned in a blog that it also contained cy uh, hydrocyanide, which is a type of acid, and that you're then putting formaldehyde and you're putting hydrocyanic acid on your skin. And my gosh, can't you guys just, you need to put something better on your skin because that's gross, you don't want formaldehyde on. While it's true, my, my, you know, my formaldehyde is a carcinogen. I remember back in the day, man, you can smell, when we did dissections of anatomy physiology, you could smell that formaldehyde coming off. It is absolutely uh, correct. It is a carcinogen. However, when you start with an ingredient, and when you start with an ingredient and what you end with are completely two different things. So let me break it down for you and give you a, an example. Um, when you bake a cake, right, when you bake a cake, you have eggs and milk and flour and baking soda and sugar and whatever else ingredients you're putting in that cake. If you're talking about um, angel food cake, you're doing egg whites. You have to add some stuff in to stiffen it. Um, but let's go back to our basic cake recipe. Um, a lot of people, uh, this would be equated to saying you can't eat that cake because you're putting raw eggs in it. And raw eggs contain salmonella, so if you eat the cake, you're going to get salmonella poisoning and it's just not good for you to do that. So just stay away from cake because it's got the eggs because you have eggs that you put it in there. So they're leaping to this inclusion, which that seems kind of silly, doesn't it? Anyway, and they're saying don't eat the cake because you got the eggs in it. But when in fact, when you combine the eggs with the flour and the baking soda and the sugar and you mix it all together and then you throw it in the oven and you cook it, it completely changes the nature of the eggs. The eggs act as a binding ingredient. They do throw a little protein in your cake, but it's mainly a binder to bind the, um, to bind the flour and all that stuff together. And when it cooked, it completely changes the property. That's basically a chemical reaction. There's so many different chemical reactions out there that we could talk about that are uh, very similar to uh, things that you're your body does. I mean, digestion is just one of them. Um, when you talk about making yogurt, you make it sour a little bit before you do it. A lot of times, you end up having um, you end up having what do you call it? Um, a pH, a lower pH. If you're if you're familiar with kimchi, kimchi is definitely you let it ferment for a while, and so. But with uh, your starting ingredients and what you in are completely two different things. So while you may start with formaldehyde, and that might be somebody that in a chemist. In a chemistry lab, they start with that ingredient and they start with hydrogen uh, cyanide. What they end with is something completely different. What they end with is tetrasodium EDTA. Now, you can get, um, very simply, you can get, uh, you can do a reaction with sodium chloride and hydrocyanide and you can end up with, um, you can end up with an exchange and you can make uh, sodium cyanide and um, hydrochloric acid. 
So you can do a couple different things. It depends on really what you're adding to it and what you want your end ingredient to be. That's all about what chemistry is. The structure of formaldehyde and the structure of EDTA are completely different the way that they're made up. Um, if you really need an example, I can you can actually Google it or I am more than happy to get you a structure of the before and the after. But really, it's all about combining them and doing it. If you've ever done the basic experiment, like when you're a kid and you made a volcano and you added the baking soda and vinegar so you can make it explode, that is a basic, basic chemistry reaction. A sodium bicarbonate and um, acetic acid and acetic acid and you are actually doing an exchange where you're exchanging the sodium and the hydrogen was from the acetic acid and so you're getting this and you're getting this exchange and then you get the gas coming off and it actually gets cold and it's really really cool um, that too is a, a chemical reaction so I want you guys to take that into account when you guys read blogs or you read anything else a lot of people will sit there and they'll do their research but because they don't have a background in science then people take them at their face value because they're saying this and it seems reasonable right you know you don't want formaldehyde of course we know it's bad of course they quit putting it in um, for dissecting at the high school and college level we don't want that we know it's a carcinogen that's why they took it out um, and how dare they use something that's formaldehyde based in a product but I want you to listen to the word formaldehyde based okay that's because you start with the starting ingredients. You can say something's egg-based too, or you can say that something's that. You might be looking at me and saying, oh, but you know, it's so different. Cooking a cake is so completely different. What you put inside you is different than what you put on it. That's absolutely true too. If you're using a soap, a soap you go on, and what do you do with the soap? It doesn't sit in your skin, you wash it off. So it's not gonna get in the bloodstream. In fact, it's virtually impossible for the ingredients that you get on to soak that far down into your bloodstream. It's, it depends on the ingredients and what they are, but usually you're just gonna wash it right off. Now, you don't have to take my word for it. You can go to a lab, find a chemist, ask them. Um, you can go out and um, you can go out to a college chemistry teacher and you can ask them. Uh, I've been angling for teaching chemistry at the college for a while now. I'm still putting in for it. But there's a lot of cool things that for chemistry where you just start with it and then you end with it. So I used to play with these chemicals and I used to combine them. I used to make these really cool things when I always used to work in the lab. Fabulous stuff. The other thing I want you to keep in mind too is that, like I said, um, don't believe everything you read on Google. The first thing we do, we do as a teacher is to say that you can't use Wikipedia as a source. If you're going to have a source, you need to back up three or four things. Anybody can claim to be an expert. It doesn't make them one. Go find someone who really is an expert. Go find somebody that makes cosmetics. Go find a, kiss, um, a chemist that does it. Go find someone that is based, is their field in this subject. And they'll tell you, this has also got a very, very low hazard rating. If you go look it up on some of the, um, uh, Truth and Aging is one, and there's, there's another one too. Get off my, sorry, the dog just, the pup just knocked my stuff over. So uh, make sure you don't believe every Tom, Dick, and Harry that writes a blog out there on anything, even baking. <laughs> so um, I hope that helped you. I hope that kind of explained a little bit more. Feel free to drop a comment. Let me know um, if you have any questions. Um, you know, if you think that I'm horrible, you can do that as well. But uh, let me know what you think, and I will probably be giving you another chemistry lesson at a later time. Bye, guys.